Rio de Janeiro, one of the most violent cities in the world. It's urban warfare where the police shoot to kill, the enemy are the drugs traffickers and the urban poor of Rio's shanty towns. The problem is that many police are themselves involved in the traffic. Enter Major Antonio Caballo, who is a man with a mission. He wants them to become community policemen. doesn't produce drugs, but cities like Rio play a pivotal role in their transit from South to North America and to Europe. The drugs trade dominates the shanty towns, the favelas, which cling to the hills of this beautiful, violent city. Major Caballo is heading for enemy territory. He must take an armed escort from the military police. Complexo Alemão is a very dangerous area because there's a huge quantity of drugs which are distributed to other communities and not only drugs, but also arms. We're doing a feasibility study to see if we can introduce the new community policing in Complexo Alemão. Carballo's vision is that one day a respected and unarmed police force will be able to enter every favela of Rio. He takes me to Complexo Alamao to show what he is up against. Viagra, that's the brand name of the product that's sold here. It's Viagra 3. They put it in the packet with the drug. There's loads of them strewn all over the ground. Bags, packets, papers. The drugs traffickers, or men on the hill as they're known, rule the favelas with guns. Here in Complexo Alemão, for me to walk around alone would be suicide. Behind us there's a security presence. Without this security, it wouldn't be possible for us to walk around and have this conversation. The men on the hill don't relish snoopers and they employ small boys as lookouts. The system is obviously working. Within minutes of our arrival, the warning fireworks are set off. For the local police, this is a routine patrol. Now that their presence is known, they expect a gunfight around every corner. Devido à nossa área de atuação, 
Given the area where we work, it could easily turn into urban guerrilla warfare. They're nervous and want to leave before the schools are out. It doesn't look good when children are caught in crossfire. What you see here is our normal patrol, our daily routine. In one of these random searches, there might be a confrontation, lots of shooting. Sometimes I can't get away and I have to ring for backup from people outside to come and get me. Out of a population of 200,000, 7,000 are believed to be drug traffickers. But as far as the police are concerned, everyone's a suspect. In one month alone, police have seized over 350 kilos of marijuana and 1,600 bags of cocaine. The package also contains bullets. Before community policemen can be introduced into the favelas, the gunmen will have to be cleared out. If we don't take risks, we can't make the necessary changes to build a better world. Especially in a violent city scarred by crime, scarred by drug traffic and by death, which is the city of Rio de Janeiro. The favelas of Rio have long been abandoned by the state. They were only put on city maps seven years ago. In the south, famous for the Copacabana and Ipanema beaches, it's harder to ignore them. It's here in the midst of the tourist area of Rio that we find Cantagallo, the favela where Caballo has launched his revolution. Here too, there are the poor, the drugs, and the men on the hill. Only Cantagallo is less of a ghetto than the favelas in the north, and there's less tension. But it wasn't always like this. A cable car, the Bonge, links the hill to the city below. It takes the people of the favela onto the asphalt, as the wealthy middle-class area is known. It was an event here last May which led to the police initiative. An enraged crowd from the hill invaded the asphalt. The fury exploded after police shot dead five young men in Cantagallo. There were arrests, but no serious casualties. Liberals were outraged by the police brutality which led to the riot, and there were calls for reform. And there were fears that the tourists might be scared away. And so the community police, led by Major Caballo, were introduced to Cantagallo. They're called the Special Areas Policing Group the Japai. Eight months on, the Major can show me around here without an armed escort. The situation that we see here, with the bullet marks on this wall, this is what used to happen before Japai came. There were successive confrontations with many victims. In the first half of last year alone, 10 people died in confrontations with the police. We're promoting a revolution in public safety. We're developing a working partnership with the community, trying to identify problems to make it easier to meet the community's demands and expectations. 
It's getting really nice here. But Caballo is up against a policing style, which is in direct conflict with his vision. Only three years ago, a policeman would get bravery awards for the number of corpses he delivered to the morgue. Most policemen still expect to get their cut from the drug traffickers. It's this tradition that Caballo knows he has to break. Our goal is to neutralize the control of the traffickers and their guns in this area and earn the respect and trust of the people who live in this community. We have three basic principles. The first is not to tolerate armed people circulating in the community. The second is not to tolerate children involved in illicit activities. And the third is not to tolerate policemen who consort with criminal elements. But what about winning over the community to his scheme? People who have only ever known police brutality and greed. Like Julia, who says she'll never trust them. They blackmailed one son and killed another. They really roughed him up. He was on his way to a dance in Rosina when they put a bag over his head. They arrested him down there. I think it was two in the morning. They asked me, do you know your son is a drug trafficker? I said I didn't. He said, you lot are all alike, you know, but you won't say. It's this one here. He had this little girl who's now with his wife. That day he asked my brother, there were loads of police on the hill, to take him down. He didn't even get where he was going. He was on his way back up the steps when the police shouted, stop. He didn't stop because he was scared. The police were always stopping him. They said they were going to kill him, so he ran. He died. He got a bullet in his back. He was screaming, I'm dying, dying. And he asked a girl to come and get us. We don't have the money, and I said to his brother, why don't we go and stay with a relative? It's better that we leave the hill since so many bad things have happened. I don't want to live here anymore, but we're forced to stay. That brother was Carlos, the eldest. The family illustrate what Major Caballo is trying to change. Two killed in shootouts, the youngest a drug trafficker, and Carlos. At 14, he was the only breadwinner, and he got a traineeship in a local bank. But his real money came from the drug traffickers. The job I had didn't give me the means to buy the things I needed. I'm not talking about getting a palace or a car. What I mean is wearing normal clothes, decent clothes. It was out of necessity. It wasn't arms or women. It was necessity. He got a good, regular income. The money was given to the man in charge, who is the owner. If he gave me 10 packages, I'd make 50 reais out of each one. Ten times five is what? Five hundred reais in one day. That's how I could handle it. Five hundred reais is about two hundred pounds, more than a policeman earns in a month. For most teenagers, it's just too tempting. The major doesn't pretend he can get rid of the drugs trade. He has another priority. We're not under any illusions about trafficking. We know it's not going to end simply because of the police presence. We're going to reduce it. Our main goal is to end the gun circulation inside the community. Carlos knows about guns on the hill. There were many types of guns, you know. 
AK-47, 7.62, G3. Or a combination of all three. There were many machine guns, pistols, Colt 45, Llama, Uzi, various kinds of guns. The confiscated weapons are kept in an armory, well away from the favela, on the asphalt. This is deposit one. All the arms we confiscate are classified and labeled and put up there. Rio is awash with guns. 10,000 were seized last year alone, but many are sold back by the police to the drug traffickers. The police also make money through blackmail. It's a cycle of violence and corruption. After proving his worth, Carlos worked his way up the hill and was put in command of his own team. He was in the business for six years before he was arrested and held in jail without charge for 18 months. It was a terrifying ordeal which made him decide to leave the drugs trade for good. As soon as I came out, the police got me again. For no reason, they broke into my house, one carrying a red rucksack. It wasn't his. He'd never seen the bag before, nor the cocaine inside it. They demanded 300 pounds. I said I didn't have the money, but they didn't want to know, so they hit me. They hit me in the face, tied my arms with tape, and they slashed my wrists with a knife. So I borrowed the money from a friend. I got the thousand reais and I gave it to them. But they said they wanted a pistol as well, otherwise they wouldn't let me go. So I managed to get out of trafficking, but then I had to go back to pay back what I owed. Wherever I went, they sent messages that they would get me, kill me. I had nowhere to go. That's how I became a prisoner on my own hillside. The lives of the policemen in the Japai are similarly constrained. Sergeant Bajos in the middle earns less than 300 pounds a month. He has a second job as a security guard at a petrol station. But whether he's in uniform or not, the threat of violence is constant. The traffickers arrived at his house at night and pointed guns through the window. They came in and tried to rape my wife. They attacked me. They beat me up badly. I lost my gun. They held a gun to the back of my head. My wife was pleading with them the whole time. They didn't kill me because of the kids. My wife asked for mercy, for them not to kill me, because the kids needed me. They were all little ones. They were newborn babies. Bajos and his family got away. Many policemen are forced by the threat of violence to turn a blind eye to the traffickers' activities. Others are just bribed. Today, Bajos has been told to find a trafficker still operating in Cantagallo.
He says their target is known to be armed and dangerous. Until the Japai can rid the community of the men on the hill and their rule of terror, the project doesn't stand a chance. They're tipped off that their man might be in a bar. They have his description, but everyone is treated as a suspect. The people that live here, the working people, it doesn't bother them. They're used to it. They're used to these guns. Guns of this kind can be found in their hands, too. But in their hands, it's worse. They don't find the trafficker, but they take four boys from the bar who don't have IDs. They're suspected of being couriers, and they know they could be thrown into a police cell. One of the mothers turns up to plead their case. They let the boys go, keen perhaps to show us community policing in action. I'm not going to tell you that it's over, that it's better. It hasn't ended and it's not better, but I hope it will. It might. But there's still policemen like the old ones that are out there. Loads of them. Eight months on since the Japai was introduced, those living on the asphalt are also not convinced. After last year's riot, they've built new and higher metal gates around their homes. There's an apartheid operating here, which Carballo is trying to challenge. He wants the city below to agree to the radical social change needed to make his project work. He's asked those from the asphalt to come up to the favela in a bid to get the two communities talking. Promovendo esse instante, esse momento de integração entre moradores do asfalto, moradores da comunidade e o nosso objetivo. Caballo wants cooperation, even business initiatives to unite the two sides. The people from the asphalt just want more old style policing to protect them from bullets. O problema do seu prédio, porque o que mais me aflige, o meu prédio é o da esquina, é insegurança. It's a genuine fear. Their apartment blocks have been shot at in the past. O objetivo fundamental é justamente integrar, porque integrando nós resolvemos os problemas. Nós resolvemos os problemas. O garoto que eventualmente pratica um furto ali embaixo, ele não vai mais praticar esse furto ali embaixo. Porque ali embaixo também faz parte da comunidade. O que que existe hoje? Existe uma divisão. Lá embaixo é É asfalto, aqui é a favela, são coisas diferentes. Isso que nós estamos tentando evitar, promover essa integração. E com a integração, nós vamos resolver todos os problemas. Colocado duas vezes, ninguém compareceu. Se ninguém quis vir, senhora. Ah, não vou subir lá, não. Vou ah, não, não, não. O que, que a gente vai fazer? Gente. Não é, mas a gente vai tentar. The people of the asphalt may be bored by the idea of Carballo's vision. But there's more at stake for the people living up here. Aguardando, eu eu tenho medo do major hoje estar aqui, amanhã não tá. Nós temos trauma da polícia, não é dessa polícia que tá aí, é da polícia que antigamente invadia o morro de Tocanija, espancava a gente, trabalhador e bandido, bandido e trabalhador, morou no Cantagalo é bandido.
samba practice for the Rio Carnival takes place at night, a time usually free of aggressive police patrolling. Unknown to the revelers, Sergeant Bajos and his men climb the hill behind the favela, still searching for the trafficker. The main objective is to track down and arrest little Roger and all his people, all his soldiers. Surprise is crucial. They've been told he's hiding at one of two houses. They don't find him at the first. There is another possibility, and the patrol splits. We're told to prepare to dive for cover when the shooting starts. It reminds me of military patrols in Beirut, Bosnia or Northern Ireland. And yet, I'm assured, this is community policing, Rio style. Okay. Pain, pain, pain. Good day. Hello, Masha. hundred men in the Japai, but already 30 have been transferred for having a bad attitude, a euphemism for corruption and brutality. Demetrius, one of the patrol, is full of excuses. We did everything as we should have. We even used a bit of surprise, but they probably weren't there. They're feeling inhibited. It's a double blow for Bajos. He's lost the trafficker, and he believes he has a traitor in his team. When they're discovered, the appropriate measures are taken. In my view, that policeman must be immediately removed from our group. The object of the hunt now changes from trafficker to corrupt policeman. By the time Bajos arrives at police headquarters for his next shift, the guilty have been identified. The notice is up with the names of those who've been transferred to another unit. It turns out that Demetrius has been suspected for some time. None of them are to be disciplined. Carvalho is resigned. It's the police culture he's learned to live with. Como você já sabe, alguns companheiros foram transferidos. Os motivos vocês também já sabem. Alguns, outros não, e eu gostaria de reforçar todas aquelas orientações com relação ao procedimento técnico policial militar, principalmente agora que se aproxima o carnaval, a possibilidade de ocorrerem problemas é muito grande, então vamos redobrar a atenção ao serviço, porque nós temos que, de vez em quando, apertar um pouquinho, mas temos que saber o momento de afrouxar também, para evitar que a pressão faça com que o caldeirão exploda. Carvalho believes that the pressure can only be eased if the community can be persuaded to trust the police. They clearly trust him. Eu acho que eu vou liberar o baile aqui sexta-feira para descomprimir um pouco. Tá? <laughs> what about the rest of the Japai, who can't even trust each other? Unfortunately, there are bad professionals within the police force. 
They're criminals dressed as police officers. So these are problems we're monitoring. We're intervening. We're revamping the police staff and trying to dismantle this image so that the police can act within the established constitutional rules of social and democratic rights. But for some, it's not working. While Carlos was out, the police came to his house, harassed his family and took his trainers because, they said, they were too expensive for a boy of the favela. If some guy is wrong and trying to correct his mistakes and is doing his best to make his life better, to live in peace, those guys simply don't let you. They turn up, they say a whole bunch of stuff and make up stories that you're up to something. For no reason. Carlos is doing his best to escape his old life. He plays in the samba band and Carvalho has helped him get a job as an office boy in a government ministry down on the asphalt. In fact, he's become the realization of Carvalho's vision of bringing the communities together. I want to work, give a better education to my daughters, and I want to set up a business, have a dog food shop. I'm going to fight hard to set this business up with effort and determination. I'm going to work the best way I can and look forward to having my life in front of me. Carlos may be trying to keep out of it, but the trafficking continues. The Zamba band take their music down to the asphalt to perform for the tourists and Brazilians at play. People also come here for the drugs, and there'll always be traffickers in the favelas ready to oblige them. It's the traditional way the two communities have interacted. It's an anxious time for Caballo. He's been involved in attempts to reform the police before, which have failed because of opposition from politicians and senior police officers. This could be his last chance. And the news from Cantagallo is bad. There's been another shooting and someone's been hurt. An 18-year-old boy called Ronnie. Major Augusto is taking statements from the policemen who say that Ronnie was caught in crossfire between rival gangs. The Cantagallo experiment is beginning to look fragile, and my suspicion is growing that Caballo is simply being used as part of a public relations exercise. The government needs to be seen to be doing something about its police. If Caballo fails, it can justify returning to the old methods. But how can he succeed with so few men and so little backing? I went to see the member of the government of Rio, who's given Caballo the task to ask him what he means by community policing. It's a new philosophy of policing, which implies a new interpretation of the rules.
Community policing is supposed to interact more. It must interact more with the community, it must involve the community and its leaders in problem solving. Above all, the police force must work in an exemplary fashion and must behave like human beings. In Japan, 30 police officers have been dismissed so far. It's not a very good start, is it? This is not discouraging at all. If there's someone in charge of removing policemen who don't fit in with the project, then this is a sign that the project is going well, that there's a will. It's serious. But your critics are saying you're simply window dressing to show that the government is doing something. Absolutely not. This is a new, innovative, revolutionary philosophy. We're seeing the fruits of much research, hard work and planning. It's revolutionizing and will continue to revolutionize police forces around the world. Caballo is still struggling with his revolution. After cross-examining the policemen, Major Augusto has found that they were lying about the shooting incident. Caballo has been to see Ronnie in intensive care. Dona Marília mora aí? O Yuri mora aí? Yuri? É. Do lado? He now calls on Ronnie's mother. This is in itself an unprecedented gesture by the police of a favela. Com licença, Dona Marília. Tudo bom? Hoje eu apurei os fatos e constatei que o disparo da arma de fogo partiu do policial numa situação de reação, porque estavam disparando contra eles, e veio atingir o Rony. Né? Infelizmente, a senhora que a mãe é duro dizer essas coisas, mas a senhora sabe que o Rony, infelizmente, está envolvido nessa vida. Ele está envolvido nessa vida. Gostaria de lamentar o ocorrido, mas infelizmente. É, mas infelizmente o policial teve que se defender, né? E felizmente o Rony está vivo. Eu conversei com ele, disse a ele que ele tinha ganho uma segunda oportunidade de vida. É, ele tem que agradecer a Deus por estar vivo. É verdade. Então deixa eu. Tá legal, um abraço. Tá? Tá. Nada. Até logo. We're under no illusions that we're going to achieve our targets in the short term, but we've already had some victories. The very fact that I'm standing here in a favela talking to you is a great victory. That wouldn't be possible in any other community. But a victory in Cantagallo, a favela of only 20,000 people, is one thing. But what about that larger favela to the north, Complexo Alamao? with its 200,000 people and 7,000 drug traffickers, where Carballo has been told to go next. The Special Operations Police Force, the BOP, are on their way there. The unit is the SAS of the Rio Police. They've been told that the traffickers have hidden a weapons cache in a church, but which one? The route we're taking is highly dangerous, as there are favelas on either side. We're going through the middle and might get shot at from both sides. It's very dangerous, so we have to move with caution.
The first church is searched, but there are no weapons. The drug traffickers open fire. The gunmen have seized the high ground. The BOP still push on to the next church. There are no weapons here either. A teenage trafficker has been spotted with a rifle, the kind that fires bullets through ten walls. The unit is forced to retreat. They return later with 700 men to occupy the favela. One of them is shot dead during the operation. They bury him the following day. It's the first fatality on duty for the BOP in five years. You've been to the place with us. You saw it. Can you imagine that place at night? They gather at a point and shoot a lot. They saturate the place with bullets so we can't advance or retreat. The incident has cast doubt on Carvalho's plan to tame Complexo Alamao. Even if the favela is made safe enough for him to enter, he reckons he would need six to eight hundred men for the Japai to stand a chance. The gunman who killed the policeman has not been found. Back in Cantagallo, the violence is continuing and children with weapons have been seen on the hill. As for the Japai, apart from the 30 who've already been transferred, a further 14 have been arrested for brutality and corruption. Clearly, the Major's revolution will need time. We're at the beginning of a process that could take 20 years, but it's as if we're embarking on a new war. I'd say it's a war for good, a war against poverty, a war against the lack of infrastructure and social conditions. Only if we manage to do this, win this war, do we have a chance of bringing safety and peace to the community. Major Carvalho is prepared to stay the course but until the social and economic revolution which the favelas so desperately need is going to be a long and lonely struggle. For more information on tonight's programme, please visit our website at www.bbc.co.uk forward slash correspondent. <laughs>